Uh, Rabbi Nachman once advised Rav Nossin to speak to other people about serving God. And he suggested to him that if you see the person is not so directly interested in speaking about spirituality, but there is a possibility of through speaking to the person about mundane issues, such as, for example, today, baseball, football, basketball, red cars and sports and everything in fashion, and from that conversation you can get to spiritual items it's worth Rabbi Nachman told of no sin it's worth investing time speaking about even mundane items if you have a feeling that it can eventually lead to spiritual topics about the purpose of life and and he and he stressed this idea that it's something very important that every Jew should should be involved with and he said that this is also the unique greatness of the tzaddikim that they are able at the highest level to directly connect to people at their mundanity and from there to bring them back the classic example was Rabbi Nachman himself who in his last year and a half of his life in the year 1810 1809 1810 in the city of Uman in the Ukraine he befriended three of the leading maskilim these were Jewish enlightened intellectuals who had begun to cast upon them from themselves the yoke of serving Hashem of Torah observance they became very you know modernized very open very liberal very not believing God forbid in Hashem in the Torah and the Tzaddikim and yet Rabbi Nachman was able to reach out to them into their inner spark he was playing shachmat playing chess with these leading intellectuals and was able to discuss with them anything under the sun except for Torah. He was able to speak to them about Greek, Latin, philosophy, medicine, everything. Once there was a case that the intellectuals were reading a book written in Greek and Latin. And Rabbi Nachman asked them, what is that in your hands that you're reading? And they said, this is not for you. Rabbi Nachman took the book, which was written, written in Latin, in Greek, Latin, from their hands, he scanned the page with his eyes, he gave it back to them, and he told them exactly everything that was written on the page. They held extremely highly of Rabbi Nachman to the point that he eventually was able to speak to them about Torah, about serving Hashem, of a few of Rabbi Nachman's biggest lessons, deepest and longest lessons in the Likud Moran, were said in front of these maskilim. They were present at the time that they were given over. They had a part in these lessons, in fact, especially lesson number eight, part two, Rabbi Nachman's last Rosh Hashanah letter, uh, lesson. So we see that Rabbi Nachman did this at a very powerful level, and he suggested Rav Nosin to speak to people, even if you know that they're inter interested in only mundane topics, but there's a chance that you'll get to spiritual items to, yes, speak to them. What has to be just warned is another lesson in Likud Temur, in Lesson 59. Rabbi Nachman says that when you are involved in trying to talk to people to bring them back to Hashem, and you begin to succeed to get them to come back to you, these people have evil forces around them because of their mundanity and when they wake up to come back thanks to you these evil forces will try to attack you now the one who's trying to draw them closer so in order to guard yourself to burn off these evil forces trying to bring you down from your fear of heaven you must do what's called mishpat every day mishpat Rabbi Nachman explains justice is judging yourself which namely is the item called, the devotion called Hidbodidut. To make sure you do Hidbodidut every day, then you can go out to the world and talk to people and not get negatively influenced. But you have to make sure that you're doing the Hidbodidut properly with the aim of doing this Mishpat, because only this Mishpat, this judgment, can burn off the evil forces. But at the bottom of the day, it is suggested to, yes, spread and talk to other people about serving God, God, even if it involves going through mundane topics.